Hello, welcome back. So nice to have you again. So it's me, Pratap. Uh, we'll be going through the guided labs of AWS. So in this lab, we'll get introduced to Amazon file system. While solving this module, so we'll be doing all these uh, different tasks. In task one, we'll be creating a security, security group to access the EF Elastic file system. In the task two, we'll be creating an Elastic file system. In the task three, we'll be connecting our EC2 instance uh, via SSH. We'll be creating a new directory and mounting the EFS file system. And then in task five, we'll be examining the performance of, uh, behavior of our new EFS. So uh, my lab is ready. Uh, so let's start the AWS. Let's start with task one. Uh, what we have to do here is we have to create a security group to access our elastic file system so the security group that that we associate with the mount uh, must follow an inbound access for tcp port 2049 uh, which is a network file system this will allow us to create configure and attach our elastic file system mount targets okay so uh, let's follow these steps and let's go to uh, ec2 And here they are asking us to go to security groups. So let's ignore about whatever what is already there. So what we have to do is we have to copy the security group ID of EFS client group. So I've copied this. So let's paste it somewhere here for now. So we'll choose create security group and then security group name should be EFS mount target. So we'll follow exactly what's mentioned here and description also let's add and then it's asking us to choose the VPC lab VPC. And then under the inbound rule, select choose add rule, then type, then configure. So we have to click add rule. And then we have to uh, choose, so I have chosen NFS. And in the source, I have to use custom. Custom, it's okay. So let's copy this, paste this. Create security group. So we have completed task one. So let's create an EFS. So from services, we can choose EFS, Elastic File System. So we need to choose create file system uh, and then choose customize and check enable automatic backup. So it's asking us to detach all the security group. So we have attached this EFS mount target which we created earlier. So let's click on next. So what we have to do is 
on step three you have to choose next review your configuration choose create so these are the configuration what we have chosen okay so now let's click on the create so now we have created a uh, elastic file system so with this i think uh, we have kind of completed task two so now we need to connect in to the ec2 EC instance via the ssh so since i'm a mac user so let's go to the mac process and then select show extension window opens choose the download pm button and save the labuser.pm file okay show so i've downloaded it so this is a public ip i can copy this and i can close this open a terminal window and change directory to the user.pam so inside let's go to downloads and then what if what is asking me to do is i need to change more the uh, lab user.pam let me just copy and paste it so it's it's much simpler and then now what i have to do is i have to ssh into the user so i've copied the ip earlier so i'll say ssh so this was the ip so let's say yes nice so now we are able to ssh into the uh, machine okay so let's follow along so now let's go to task 4 amazon efs supports the nfs v4 and bro and it's mounting the file system i think you can go through it by reading yourself uh, sudo make mkdir efs And then it's asking me to uh, choose the EFS file system which we created there. So we should see something called attach. So I have to copy this. After running this command, uh, we have successfully mounted that. So in order to check if uh, like uh, the mount so you can see here uh, this was the which one which we added just now so in this task 5 let's examine the performance behavior of our EFS file system so it's saying that if I come if I run this command the FIO command will take 5 to 10 minutes so I'll just run and wait for the result And then the output should look like the example screenshot so it says that the output uh, will look something like this make sure that you examine the output of your fi command especially the summary status information in the right test so let's wait for the result it should, it should be available in some time so till the time this is uh, happening uh, let's follow these other steps CloudWatch. So it's asking me to open CloudWatch. And I need to choose metrics under all metrics. I need to choose EFS. And then I think I need to choose this. Select the row that has parameter throughput metric name. So yeah, it's something's happening here. So we can see the same result here, the throughput here. If you see the graph here, so if I refresh. So since this is completed, so I need to check this command uh, as they mentioned here. 
right here did say that uh, make sure that we examine the output of your FIO command especially the summary status information for this right test so these are this information so let's continue with this point 53 let's click on refresh so I'm not sure like what uh, what do I have to check here oh yes so now we're able to see this flat line so I can clearly see that there's a throughput part of the throughput of this thing I'm not sure like why exactly it's different from this one anyway uh, let's follow along data right IO bytes so let's choose data right IO bytes let's uncheck this let's check this There is an I bytes here in this section. So on the statistic column, let will choose some. On the period column, select one minute. Okay because of your point uh, post or point on the peak of the line graph so the peak should be this one so anyway uh, so like we are seeing a different output uh, so it doesn't matter like if it's different but I can just zoom and see here so anyway uh, we are seeing some output anyway this uh, we have created EFS file system we mounted it to an EC2 instance and also we ran an IO benchmark test to examine its performance and characteristics. So I think uh, to understand more about the data right IO bytes uh, graph and the uh, permitted throughput, I think we can uh, have another session on this to understand more detail about it. But we can conclude that we have completed the module for guided lab and we, we went through all these tasks successfully. So till then, uh, I think uh, we can continue with the next module. So see you in the next module again. So if you like the video, please like, please share this to your friend. And also if you haven't subscribed my YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.